I felt completely isolated. It's this feeling of being completely trapped in your own body. Drowning in indescribable depression. Like standing in a crowded room screaming but no one's listening. And it was as if I had been hit by a ton of bricks and I could not get up. Heartbreakingly sad. I didn't know what other way of escaping this other than to die. What does it mean to be depressed? If I could turn your brain on to be sad and I turned off the off switch, what would you experience? My analogy is to what happens to a garden in wintertime. It just looks impoverished. It's still the same garden, it just doesn't look like a happy place anymore. We're looking at something that seems kind of ephemeral. You can hardly grasp what it is, much less pinpoint it. But it's one of the biggest burdens on humanity across the globe. Depression is the leading cause of disability worldwide. Greater than heart disease, cancer, infectious disease. All available treatments today are based on discoveries made by serendipity 60 years ago. Almost 50% of people who are depressed do not respond well to the common treatments. So we are talking a lot of people. We have not had new treatments for depression developed in a long, long time. And lots of drug companies have given up on it. What we call depression is really a multitude of disorders. No single type of science, and no single scientist, no matter how smart and talented, can ever figure it out. We need to bring to bear everything we know and all the tools that science has developed. Now you have a group here of seven individuals who comprise the Depression Task Force. Top researchers studying multiple models, multiple perspectives, in ways that can interact, feed off each other. Many of us have known each other for years and we work together very well. The hope is that a group of great scientists are bigger than the sum of their parts. I am confident that we will be able to find the root causes of depression. We are a bit like the Manhattan Project aimed at curing depression. The nature of collaboration in this venture is extremely unusual. It's a number of very powerful labs putting their resources together, communicating actively, collaborating. Each of us comes to the challenge with a different toolkit of experimental approaches and the tools that are available today are incredibly advanced. We are throwing the traditional models out the window and thinking about it from a totally new point of view. We share insights and experimental procedures. We share results the day we get them. The exchange of ideas doesn't wait for publications to come out. And that's something in science that's pretty rare. I mean, we tend to be pretty territorial, pretty protective of our findings. All of this is a unique kind of science that is really just now coming to the fore. And now we are reaching the point where we're actually going to test these ideas in clinical trial in people. This is the most advanced approach to depression research in the United States today. When I walk by a daycare and I see three, four-year-olds playing their hearts out, smile, full of joy, I do so through the eyes of a clinician who knows that in five or six years, 10% to 20% of those kids will be suffering miserably with mental disorders. And I look in there and I want to know which kids and what can I do to help. Sometimes in psychiatry, we become satisfied with the term better treatments, but what we're really after are cures. 